What is up guys, this is Enigma from Void and today I'm going to be doing another client code tutorial. This one will be slightly more advanced as it uses HTTPS requesting uh, things. So yeah, if if you're not up for it then don't watch this tutorial, it's not for you. Um, also if you know your basics in GUI then this shouldn't be too hard except from the the um, authentication. Authentication code. Oh, I can't even get words out there. So first, what we want to do is we actually want to make a new class, and we're going to call this GUI Screen uh, uh, GUI Screen Account. We'll call it that. Uh, source folder will be in Client Source. Package will be in net.minecraft.src. Uh, we'll just click finish. Now, as soon as this creates, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make it extend GUI screen. Ba basically, that implements all the kind of methods from GUI screen, which include um, your text fields, your buttons, your labels, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, we're also going to need to declare quite a few imports, so you can do import asterisk, and that will import all the IO utils from Java, and then we can do, you can import the specific ones you need, but it's just better to do it this way, trust me, dot net dot URL, and do we also need Java dot net dot URL encoder. Um, we're gonna need Java dot uh, what is it net dot uh, SS. I think it's SSL dot HTTPS URL connection. Oh no, it's Java X dot yeah, that's right. Um import the keyboard import org dot LWJGL dot dot input dot keyboard. Now we've already done that in our basic keybind so you should know how to do that. Um yeah so I think we're pretty much ready to get started. First, what you want to do, you want to de uh, you want to declare uh, you want to declare four variables: a, um, a a parent GUI screen, which is one that when you press cancel, it will take you back to the main menu. Then you're going to need your you're going to need two text fields: one for your username, one for your pass for, password, and then you're going to need another thing, a string to return an error message if the account is not valid or if you can't establish a connection. So first we're going to just make these private. Uh, so private GUI screen which is going to be the parent one and we'll just call it parent screen. Private GUI text field and we'll call it UTF. You can call it whatever you want but um, just remember what you call it. And then we're going to make another one private. GUI text field PTF and that will just stand for password text field um, and then do a string for our error so private string error this is going to be a long tutorial by the way so stay tuned next we want to do a constructor for the class to uh, define the parent screen so public and then we're going to do GUI screen account GUI screen par1 call par1 anything doesn't matter um, but I'm just going to call it par1 because it saves time and we'll just set parent screen equal to par1 um, we don't need to do the does GUI pause game method because um, this will be in the main menu or in the multiplayer menu, so it's not actually going to be accessible during gameplay, if that makes sense. 
Um, then we're going to do our update screen method, um, which is for when we're typing so that to um, updates. So we'll do public void update screen. And by the way, you can just call these methods anything because um, the way it works is it looks for this, it looks for the method name um, update screen to tell if it needs updating or not. So if you call this something like update blah blah blah, then it's not going to work. It has to be exactly this. So just copy along exactly what I'm doing and it should work fine. Um, so then and here we're going to do utf dot update cursor counter and we're going to do the same for ptf dot update. So that's that done for the update screen method which is really simple. Now we're going to do our protected void key type. Remember copy exactly as I do so you don't get any errors. Um, so you do utf um, dot text box key type c i and again for the p t f dot text box key typed c and i and then we're going to do a check to see if if the um Basically, if if the tab key is pressed, then it will switch to the to the next field, or it will switch between fields rather. Um, so the way we do that is we do if c. So if the character you press is c is equal to, and this is apostrophes. This is not quotation marks. This is in apostrophes. Backslash t, which is basically Java for tab. Um, then we're going to change the fo the focused. Uh, the focused object in the screen. So inside here we're going to do if utf dot is focused we're going to do utf dot set focused false and then we're going to do ptf dot set focused true so basically it switches between them and then an the else statement is basically the same thing uh, yeah so it's just in here whoops it is else utf dot set focused true ptf dot set focused false so that will just switch between it when you press tab so basically you don't actually have to have any buttons in this you can just use the tab and enter key and obviously your normal keys to type and yeah that's it um, now we're going to do a check to see if the enter key is pressed and then if it is then we're going to basically execute it and we're going to press the button essentially so we're going to do if character is equal equal to it and remember this is an apostrophes not quotation mark apostrophes is the one next to the grave key um, right, excuse my voice it's a little bit oh, croaky but whatever and then see here is backslash r which is Java for return or enter, as everybody commonly refers to it. And then we're going to do action performed. We're going to get an error here because we've not created this method, but that's fine. GUI button. GUI button. This dot button list dot get zero. Um, so that's how I press the zeroth button, which will be the done button. Yeah. Um, now that we've done that, that's us done for the key type method. Let's just clean this up a little bit. 
Um, so now we can do the protected void mouse clicked, which will check if you've clicked inside the box so that you can start taking on it. Protected void mouse clicked int i int j int k not ink int and um, we're going to do a super method super dot mouse clicked I've got to change that to i j k and then we're going to do utf dot mouse clicked and the same thing i J K should automatically pop up the things that's in your um in your constructor, but if it doesn't, then just put it in yourself. That's I'm just double clicking it, so it's easier. Just click there, J K, and I'll basically just yeah. Um, I don't feel like I need to explain all of this to you because most of it's self-explanatory, but for the skids and noobs and I guess not, but whatever. This took me like three hours to figure this out. I only figured it out earlier today, in fact. So yeah. So in the init GUI, we need to we need to enable the repeat events, keyboard the keyboard repeat events, because we're typing stuff. Keyboard dot enable repeat events, and this is a boolean flag, so we're just gonna say that's true. Um, this dot button list dot add a new GUI button ID of zero. Um, and then we're going to do the width divided by two minus a hundred and two, not thousand and two, a hundred and two. Then we're going to do height divided by two. Uh, plus 25, it's going to be 204 long and 20 high, and the text is going to say um, done or log in. You can make it with say whatever, it doesn't really matter, that's not going to make a difference, just as long as you know what it does. Then we're going to do our R button, so this the cancel button, button list dot add new GUI. Button this time it's ID of one width divided by two minus hundred and two. Same thing basically except the height divided by two plus um let me think here. It needs to be twenty four, so there's a full space between it. Uh, so it should be forty nine I think. Uh same width and same height. And the text this time's gotta be cancel. And I'll be back in a minute. Right, sorry about that, I got interrupted there. Um, what was I? Right, now that we've got our buttons added, we can add the text fields. So, UTF is equal to new GUI text field. Text field. And um, the arguments for this is the type of font renderer, which is just going to be the basic one. Um, the positioning and the length and the height. So font renderer. And we're gonna do width minus two minus a hundred. You can mess around with these values. By the way, it doesn't matter really. Two hundred and twenty. And then we're going to do PTF equals new GUI text field uh, font renderer width minus divided sorry divided by two minus a hundred. Um, this one should be like about forty blocks over or something. Because there's going to need to be space in between for the text to indicate what's what. So I think about 160 would be good for that. Um, 220. 
Um, now we need to do our draw screen method that will actually add all this stuff into the screen as, along with some other things. So we need to do a public void draw screen int i int j. By the way, int i j, same for all of this. Like in constructors, you can call whatever you want, but basically make sure you reference it to whatever you're in, you are assigning. But you should know that if you if you learn Java anyway. So, um, we're going to draw the default background, which is basically the dark dark texture. Background. Is that spelled right? Yeah, as. Then we're going to do a draw string method. Uh, I using font render all. Um. It will, and text will be username, which is just going to be above the username text field. Um, width divided by 2 minus 100. Uh, 63. And the color 0x, a0, 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 which is white. We're sort of whitish, kind of slate grey, and then we're going to do our drawstring. Drawstring font render. The string is going to be password to indicate the password field. The width divided by two minus a hundred, and um, hundred and four. So it's just like four pixels down from. Or just like four pixels above from like one of these text fields, and same color, a zero, a zero, a zero, and I spelled width from width. Um, let's actually draw the text boxes now. Dot draw. I think it's dot draw text box. Yeah. Um PTF dot draw text box. And if there's an error, so if so if error does does not equal null, so if there is an error, then we basically want it to display it. And there's gonna be an error or two because Basically, we have not actually done the big method that actually returns the error and actually logs you in. So, we're going to do a draw string. So, it's got to draw a string and say there's an error. Font render. Um, two four seven C, which is color code for red. Um, failed to log in uh, colon space plus error so it's going to actually display what the error is um, positioning is width divided by 2 minus 100 uh, 10 pixels down and that same color well we don't actually need, it doesn't actually matter because the color is overridden here so we can just do anything here, but I'm just going to do a0, a0, a0. Right. And now that we've done that, we can do the super dot draw screen. And that finishes everything up for the draw screen method. I, J, F. Right. Um, yeah, make sure when you're doing draw screen, make sure these correspond to these. And that's a float, remember, not an int. Yeah, so. Um, public void on GUI closed. So basically what happens when we 
close the GUI. Well, we don't really need to type anything anymore, so we can just put in keyboard dot enable repeat events false. And now we need to do our action performed for what happens when, when a button is fired. Um, I'm coding all this from scratch. I could have just basically copied another uh, class, but that's just low and it gives you guys a little bit of knowledge on how GUI screens work. Protected void. Protected because if we did public, it wouldn't work. Because when, when we do public, then it, it could probably get mixed up with buttons from another GUI screen, uh, which could cause problems. And now it's typed exactly like this. So just copy exactly what I'm doing or else it won't work. Um, and we're going to do a GUI button as a type and we're just going to call it par1 just for shortness. So when that's fired and we're going to say if if it's not enabled, so if it's then we're just going to return, that means do nothing basically. Um, we're going to do if par one dot id is equal equal to one, which is so if it's equal to one, right? Wait, sorry, button one is the cancel button, so we're just going to open up the the main menu screen, or the parent screen rather. So, if it's equal to one, then mc dot display gui screen parent screen right there. Okay, and we're going to do f par one dot id is equal equal to zero. So if the if the login button is pressed, then this is where all the code comes in. So and well this is actually not even a lot of it compared to what we're going to do in a minute. So if if the password text field dot get text dot length uh, is greater than zero. So, like, it has to be greater than zero for it to work. String s is equal to utf dot get text, and there we go. The string s one is equal to ptf dot get text. Um. Now we need a try statement in here. Try, and this is going to basically just try and do the login. String s2 is equal to user equals and URL encoder dot encode s with the style of UTF uh, U UTF-8 yeah. and and password is equal to Basically what this is, this is basically going to append the URL which is going to be sent to the, it's going to be sent, so it's going to basically send this URL which would be the syntax for the Minecraft login which would be the user equals blah 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 and password equals blah 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 and version equals blah blah blah. Um, so you can just do like, um, you, you can't just use up equals plus that because it's actually sending it to the to the internet it's basically like a virtual browser that doesn't actually open up that's sending this login request and then it returns uh, the login is that's, that's basically the simplest way I can explain it really so 
also S1. Well, what did I do? And the style of this is UTF-8. And I'm not going to go into detail about what all of this means. Just do it. Just do it, bitches. Right, where was I? Yeah. Um, and and version equals. Uh, put that as thirteen for the meantime. I think I'm missing a bracket here. Um, oh wait, we don't need any brackets actually. That's right. So, and now that's all good. So this basically stores the username and password that we entered in the text fields, and it will, and it will basically change it into a part of a URL. And now we're actually going to do the URL. So we're going to do, we're going to make an, a new method and which is going to send a login request. Um, what, what that method is going to be, we're going to say string s3 is equal to um, send send login just call it that, it doesn't really matter, but it's got to take two string parameters. First one is the first part of the URL, which is HTTPS, because it's secure. Well slash login dot minecraft dot net forward slash. And the second one is S2, which is the details. And we get an error on send login, but we've not actually created it, so don't worry. And so we're going to do a quick check to see if if S3 is equal to null so if you don't get anything back or Or if it doesn't contain contain a colon, then error equals s three and return, which means do nothing. Right. Um. I think that's us pretty much done. No. Wait. Wait. We've still got a lot to do. With a string es, so string array equals s3 dot split um, mc dot session equals new session so basically it's going to change the session it's going to change the user um, trim es free dot trim um mc dot dis dot display gui screen parent screen so basically after you log in it's going to go back to the menu screen and now we need our try catch statement which goes here so catch exception e so if there's an error with that then it's going to just basically send it to the console. It's not really going to do much with it. E dot print stack trace. 
Um, yeah, so that's, I was pretty much done with that method. Now we need to actually code the Hmm, right, where am I here? So, we need to go here and we need to do our else statement. So, if it's not any of those buttons, um, mc.session equals new session. utf dot get text so basically it's just gonna load it's gonna basically log into a fake account really um or the account that you chose so it's basically just basically just changes your name I'm sure now um now just outside here at MC dot display GUI screen and again parent screen. So no matter what happens when you've clicked the button, it'll always take you back to the default screen. And that's us pretty much done for this method. Now we can actually make this send login. So we just click create method here and give it a second and it should create a nice little method for us without us having to do too much. So we're going to change a couple of things. We're going to change this to a public static string instead of private public static string string. Uh, let's just change this to S and S1 just for simpleness. Saying. Let's get this to do out of the way. We don't need that. Right here's where shit gets tricky. This is where we actually send the data. HTTPS. Um, URL connection and we're just going to call it con for short equals null. We just set it as null right now and we'll change it shortly. Now we need to do our try statement. So in our try statement this is where it's going to basically try and send it to the server and get all the data that it needs and this is well over 30 minutes by now but you know what if, if you're really that dedicated then you know. So uh, need to make a URL. Just call it URL. There's no URL. And I'll take the parameter string, which is this here. AKA AKA HTTPS uh, login dot minecraft dot net and we're going to do con is equal to https url connection url dot open connection um so that's basically saying that this connection here is basically whatever the url is which was defined here um, now that we've got that, we can type in con dot set request method. And and here post. We're going to do three three things as well. Um, which is we're going to do three request properties. So it's con dot set request property and the first string is going to be content type and it's just do it exactly as I do it or else it won't work and then here we're going to type in um, Uh, 
application for slash x dash www dash not dot form dash URL encoded. Let me just double check that, make sure I've not got any spelling, spelling errors. Con dot set request. Set request property um, content length. Content length uh, value is. integer dot to string this one dot get bytes dot length and then we're going to do the language so con dot set request property uh, um, Content language and it's going to be en us, real simple. Now, us English basically that is. Um, you can change that if you're in a foreign country, I believe, but I would just recommend leaving it as it is. And I mean, I don't know why you'd be watching this tutorial if you can't speak this language, so yeah. Let's do con dot set use caches false uh, con dot set do it and put true con dot set do output true um, con dot connect and that actually sends the that actually establishes the connection we need to do a data output stream now that will actually basically get the return data. I don't really know how to explain this, it's quite, it's quite annoying to explain. So we're going to do data output stream dos equals new data output screen no, oh, not screen, stream. And it'll be con dot get output stream, like that. Um, now we're just going to do dos dot rate bytes. And the string is s1. Now again, I'm not gonna go into detail on how this works. Dos dot flush and dos dot close because we don't need it anymore after it writes the stuff. Basically, it writes it, gets ready everything that is it's basically outputted, and then it's gonna close it. And then we're gonna do an input stream. Input stream is equals con dot get and put stream and then we're going to do buffered reader br equals new buffered reader new input stream reader is Almost done. Now, um, we've got that done. We just need to do a, sh a couple more strings, a while loop, and yeah. String buffer uh, SB equals new string buffer. Don't need any arguments for that, so that's fine. String s2 while s2 is equal to b 
auto read plain uh, does not equal no sp dot append s2 sp dot append and then just like before it's not quotation marks it's put it's uh, apostrophes and it's backslash r which is return right and now just outside of here we can actually close the buffer tree dot because we don't need any more br dot close um let's just get some space here here dot close um string s3 is equal to sp dot to string just copy exactly what I'm doing by the way don't even bother renaming it because you're just gonna fuck up one point on R and I'm not here to help um string s4 is equal to s3 and this is basically just so we can return that don't know why but fuck it why not s4 that's really actually not necessary, you can just, just return S3, but, yeah, return S4, and then now we can do our catch statement, catch, exception, e, e dot print, print stack trace, And return null because uh, we need a return statement somewhere in here, or else it's not going to work. And now we're going to do our finally statement. And basically, finally is the last thing that's going to happen, which is basically just going to close down the connection. So, finally, if if it's actually connected, so if con does not equal null, then so if it's still connected, then con dot disconnect, and that's us fucking done. Um, now all we need to do is is call this. Um, so we're going to go into GUI main menu and we're going to add a button to it. So we're going to do this dot button list dot add new GUI button um what ID should we use let's just let's go check some let's just use the ID of twenty just to be safe because it doesn't really matter. Um see where the multiplayer button is and see the size and position of it. I'll just copy the multiplayer buttons. Hmm. Never mind, that's just too much work. <laughs> 20 width divided by 2 minus 100 and height divided by two minus twenty. Let's just go over that. Um, we need the length, which is two hundred, the height, which is twenty, and the text, which is basically going to say. Uh, switch account. Right, um, right, so that's GUI ID 20. So come down here into the action perform method, and we're just going to type, just basically got to copy this, change this to 20. Uh, let's just delete all this right now, and we'll just do it from scratch. MC dot dis Display GUI screen no uh, 
GUI screen account and the parameters for it is this which is this screen because this is a menu screen now we are all pretty much done now I'll prove that this works and I'll prove that I can get onto a, a premium server by switching accounts I'm going to blur out the password obviously because it's not actually blurred out but if you're genius enough I'm sure you'll figure out a way of basically copying the GUI text field and basically making it so that Well, let's just kind of change the position a little bit of that. Let's do it. plus plus fourteen. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a fussy fuck when it comes to positioning. Obviously not. Plus thirty eight. <laughs> just excuse me, I could just run this in debug mode if I don't get it right and you can just keep going back and forth between GUI screens. That's pretty good. Not when it's maximized, but what you gonna do? In fact, you know what we could do? Let's just change this. Let's just change that to 4. And 4. It will save us a fucking hassle. And it's just going to be up in the corner then. <laughs> That's a big button. <laughs> right, but anyway, here we go. Log in. Nothing's going to happen. Let's just put in some random crap. Basically, it'll basically return the actual error. Um, so if I, for example, use my own account and I'm going to blur out my password, and I need to do this before I remember. Um, it'll d depending on what kind of error you've got seen, then um, it won't see none. See, fail to log in, account migrated, use email as username. So I'll actually use my email address this time. And wait, before I do this, let's go into multiplayer and we're going to add an account. Let's go and make a simple play.opcraft.com. It's a good PvP server. Play.opcraft.net, maybe. Yeah. Well, this client's actually for 1.5.1, .1, so I just forgot that. But if I just go ahead and actually, I've done this in 1.5.1. .1. I was just going to single player and I'll show you um, what it means. What I mean. Right, um, tab obviously doesn't work right, but you know what I mean. If I do slash me socks, I don't actually have an account because I just kind of used. Oh dear, right, let's go into switch account. Let's just add a random account. Shit, tits. I think I think that should have reset it. Hmm. Right, well anyway, right now that that's done. Um let's go on here and edit console actually. It should say my name. Right, well, I originally logged in as player two hundred seven, 
So what we're going to do is switch your account, and I'm actually going to use my own account. And I'm going to put oh wait, sorry, I need to use my e email address, but she's going to get blanked out. Or I could just use another account actually. Um. This is still getting blanked out though. There we go. Um, there's no errors. So, theoretically, if there was a 1.5.1 .1 server that was premium, I would be able to log in right now. And you can see I've still I've got my skin, the skin for this account. That's a whole lot of fucking wolves. Slash me, blah blah blah. See, there we go. Um. Yeah, this has been such a fucking lengthy tutorial. It's almost an hour long, so you know what? I don't, I don't care. Uh, it's worth it. Um, please uh, leave a thumbs up, really, because I just did put an hour in it to make this video. Um, yeah, I've nothing much more to say except hopefully I should be able to upload a random griefs episode soon as well. Um, I'm going to try and get a little bit more active in the group because I have been inactive lately and that's the reason why there's not been any tutorials. But yeah, just please subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, uh, like the video, give me some feedback, some ideas, stuff like that. Also, if you've got any servers you want us to grief, just leave the IP and we'll see what we can do. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, so... Look forward to the feedback and I'll see you next time.